Hello, sports fans and White Sox fans out there. I'm here again with the White Sox recap of the week that was July 18th to July 24th. Over that span of time, we had played the Astros in one game, the Twins uh, four times, I think. Yes, and the Brewers twice. <clears throat> so, we'll get right into it, starting with the July 18th game. This was Astros at White Sox, and the pitching matchup was Valdez versus Rodon. The White Sox came in 55 and 36, and uh, the White Sox ended up winning this game. The Astros did not do very well at all. The only note for the Astros for um, uh, performances was Toro was one for three, and Valdez pitched six and a third innings, allowed seven hits and four earned runs. But for the White Sox, Tim Anderson was one for four with a homer and an RBI. Engel was two for four. Abreu was one for three. Uh, <clears throat> Moncada was one for four with a homer and an RBI. And Mendick was one for two with an RBI. Rodon pitched seven in this game, allowed only one hit and zero earned runs. And so with this win over the Astros, the White Sox improved to 56 and 36. And 1-0 this week, and they um, attempted to prove that they can beat good teams. However, we will see that uh, we got a mixed message on that later in the week. <clears throat> July 19th was the Twins at the White Sox, and this was a doubleheader. Game 1 was the pitching matchup in Game 1 was Jax versus Lance Lynn. And the White Sox came in 56 and 36 and 1 and 0 on the week. For the Twins, uh, Arias was 2 for 4, Polanco was 2 for 4 with an RBI, and Jeffers was 2 for 3. Jax pitched four innings, he allowed one hit and one earned run. Duffy got the win, he went one inning and allowed zero earned runs. Robles got the save. For the White Sox, there really wasn't much to talk about. Tim Anderson was one for four with a homer and an RBI, and Zavala was one for two. Lynn pitched seven. He allowed five hits and one earned run, but Crochet pitched a third of an inning, one hit, two runs. One of them was earned, and he got the loss. So with the White Sox uh, losing in extra innings 3-2, that dropped them to 56-37 and 1-1 and one and one for this week so far. Then we go to the uh, second game of the July 19th doubleheader. The White Sox coming in 56-37 and 37 at this point and 1-1 one and one for the week. And this was Barrios versus Lopez. For the Twins, Garver was two for three with two homers and two RBIs, and Gordon was one for one. Barrios pitched six. He allowed four hits and five earned runs. For the White Sox, Moncada was one for three, a home run, an RBI. Abreu was one for three, a home run, and an RBI. And Sheets was one for three with a homer and three RBIs. Lopez pitched three innings. <clears throat> he allowed two hits and one earned run. And Bummer got the win. He went one inning, zero hits, zero earned runs. With that big win, the White Sox uh, improved. With that 5-3 win, the White Sox improved to 57-37 and 37 and 2-1 and this week. And uh, then we had, on July 20th, another game against the Twins. Uh, this was Bailey Ober versus Dallas Keigel. The White Sox come in 57 and 37 and 2 and 1 for the week. For the Twins, Donaldson was 2 for 5, a home run and RBI. Polanco was 1 for 4, a home run, two RBIs. Kepler was 2 for 4 with a homer and an RBI. Ober pitched 5, he allowed 5 hits and 3 earned runs. Elcala got the loss. He went a third of an inning, allowed 1 hit and 3 earned runs. For the White Sox, Abreu was three for five, one homer, four RBIs. Goodwin was one for four with an RBI. 
Moncada was three for four with a homer and two RBIs, and Vaughn was one for one with an RBI. Keiko pitched five, he allowed four hits and two earned runs, and Burr got the win. He went one inning, allowed three hits, two earned runs. The White Sox exploded for five runs in the bottom of the eighth to come back from behind to win this game nine to five, and with that win, they moved to 58 and 37 and three and one for the week. And that's where the uh, wheels started to fall off. Um, the 21st was the Twins at the White Sox. White Sox come in 58 and 37, three and one for the week in Pineda versus Cease. For the Twins, Kepler was two for four with one homer and one RBI. Polanco was three for four with a homer and three RBIs, and Cruz was one for four with an RBI. Uh, pitching Pineda went five. He allowed four hits, only one earned run, and got the win. Vaughn for the White Sox was two for four with an RBI, and Cease pitched five. He allowed seven hits and three earned runs and got the loss. With this loss, the White Sox dropped to 58 and 38 on the year and 3 and 2 for this week with the 7 to 2 loss. So we got our butts handed to us there. But some good news after this game Cruz was traded from the Twins to the Tampa Bay Rays. So whatever games we have left against the Twins, we are not going to have to worry about Nelson Cruz. On the 23rd, we went to Milwaukee and took on the Brewers after a day off. The pitching matchup in this game was Giolito versus Peralta. The Sox came in 58 and 38 and 3 and 2 for the week and got crushed 7 to 1. But it wasn't Giolito's fault. Giolito pitched well for six innings, but then the bullpen was torched for six runs. The, for the White Sox, Vaughn was three for four with a homer and an RBI, and Giolito got the loss, but he pitched six innings, six hits allowed, and only one run. For the Brewers, Avisail Garcia was one for four with an RBI, Rowdy Taliz was two for three with two RBIs, and Taylor was one for three with a homer and four RBIs. Peralta only pitched four, but he allowed only one hit and zero earned runs and over that span. And then Hauser got the win. He went two and allowed two hits. With the loss the, to the, in the first game to the Brewers, the White Sox dropped to 58 and 39 and three and three for the week. And then they had the uh, they had the game against the. Uh, the July 24th game against the Brewers, Rodon versus Corbin Burns. The White Sox came in 58 and 39, three and three for the week, and they lost six to one. For the White Sox, Vaughn was two for four and Goodwin was two for four. Rodon got the loss. He went four innings, allowed four hits, four uh, and four four runs, two of them earned. For the Brewers, Wong was one for four with a homer and an RBI. Taylor was two for four with a homer and an RBI. And Talese, again, Talese and Taylor, a pain in our butts uh, for the Brewers, was three for four with two homers and three RBIs. Burns got the win. He went six. He allowed four hits and one earned run. And with that, the White Sox dropped to 58 and 40 and three and four for the week. So although we did do good against the Astros at the tail end of that series, we really laid an egg against the uh, Brewers. So the jury is still out on really exactly how well we'll do against really good teams when we get to the playoffs. Uh, but right now, it still looks like we're on course to get to the playoffs because the Indians while all of this was going on, the Indians were struggling against the teams that they were playing. And they, uh, in case you uh, didn't know, the uh, Cleveland Indians will be named the Cleveland Guardians next year and going forward. Not, uh, in my opinion, a great name, but, you know, it's Cleveland. 
I'm not a Cleveland fan, so I don't have to care. But we uh, we do have some work to do against uh, improving against the better teams that we're going to face. But remember, we're also playing without Robert. We're playing without um, Eloy Jimenez, and we are um, also um, we are playing without um, Madrigal and uh, also Grandall at catcher. So. Uh, the fact that we're still not beating the good teams is, you know, I, I would say we'd really like to see what we could do when we've got the full complement of our team available to play against those teams. And, uh, and, and Eloy Jimenez should be back uh, in a week or two. And also Robert should be back two to three weeks probably. Grandall also another maybe three weeks. So we will hopefully have those all of those guys for the stretch run. But in the meantime, we're also still playing teams in our division quite a bit, and the teams in our division are not all that scary. So uh, I think that uh, getting to the playoffs is a guarantee at this point. It's just the... Uh, is just how we actually end up doing against the teams that we have to play once we get to the playoffs. But what do you guys think? Leave me a comment below. Give me a thumbs up if you like the video. Um, do you think, uh, uh, who do you think we should go out and get at the trade deadline? I think um, I've heard that the rumors are getting really heavy that we're gonna get Adam Frazier, but we'll see if that happens. Um, I still think we need uh, an arm or two in the bullpen also, but, um, let me know your thoughts, but that's going to be it for me. Sportsman Z, Bob Zolke, signing off.